you see within a lot of these thinkers who are sort of at the, the, the margins of both anarchism and Marxism, a real, you know, I think ideological, um, you know, lack of purity. There's this real interesting evolution over time. Like, mm-hmm. for example, with CLR James, he, you know, he sort of starts as a sort of what we would call a rad lib, right? Right. He's, he's right. very much in the sort of moral liberal tradition, becomes a Trotskyist. Um, and then leaves Trotskyism to develop his own form of, uh, I think, heterodox Marxism, which integrates anarchist ideas, particularly about um, you know spontaneity and and about the the, the continuing relevance of um, of anti bureaucratic critiques, right? right? So, like 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 James's critique goes beyond Stalinism to actually actively critiquing Leninism itself, mm-hmm. and and I think that that's interesting because James was somebody who lived, you know from I think like 1901 to 1989, he lived a very long time. He right. lived almost the entire history of the Soviet project. So he could kind of look at it from like the big picture, right? Right. And as an historian, he's looking at it in a broader way too. But, you know, I think that people, uh, I think what makes him interesting is that like he never rejects his Marxism. There are some people who have like those anarchist influences, whether it's him or or Panacek or Garen, they never reject their Marxism. Right. They just, they give themselves space within their ideological worldview to include anarchist ideas. Which I can appreciate, like, because coming from uh, what I always considered like a pragmatic anarchist type of viewpoint is like, I need, like, yeah, I consider myself an anti-statist, an anti-hierarchy person, but, uh, I need to be able to accept the evidence of new other, other things and new ideas and better, you know, mm. I need to keep growing too. Right. Right. And, and and I'm kind of on the different end of it where I'm a Marxist and to a certain extent at my most, I think my most milk toast, I'm kind of a social Democrat. So, you know, I believe in sort of the power of using the state for good, which right. could, could be <laughs> wrong. Like I admit that that could be a position that is nonsense. Right. But like, and that we and but but I'm with you in that like the the end goal is to live in a society where hierarchies are either eliminated or they are drastically reduced. We I believe in in a world where we can build the kind of democratic power, whether that comes in the form of councils, workers' councils, or that comes in the form of um, some form of you know, state, but also that is mixed with a heavy, heavy amount of trade unionism. Mm-hmm. Um, I think as I've gotten more into my sort of my own political journey, a lot of my core principles have not really necessarily changed in terms of how I want people to, how I want society to, to sort of function and help people flourish and live, you know, right. and, and, and good lives. But I'm also like, I'm, I'm kind of pragmatic in that sense too, right? <laughs> 